I'm, I, I'm Coffee Kevin. I uh, was playing. Uh, and, uh, you know, I always wondered if they have auditions for the Supreme Court. I, I, I want to be ready. I, uh, I, I like... Uh, I like using a mallet. Um, I, I know it isn't a mallet on the on the in courts. Um, okay, we've got a coffee maker which is really unusual today. Uh, it, it's and and the thing about it is everyone thinks it's not unusual, and that's one reason I don't think it did well in the in the uh, department store circuit because let's face it, people in department stores that work in the coffee aisles. One reason I think Amazon's successful is because the, the uh, people who uh, work in department stores weren't able to sell it. Uh, they, 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 they don't understand it. I, I do a lot of secret mystery shopper eavesdropping in uh, retail. Uh, I, I, I kind of like to uh, hang out in uh, the coffee maker department and hear what uh, people tell consumers, and it's a uh, not good. So um, this coffee maker, I think, really was hurt by that. Uh, and it is a, a quite a fine coffee maker. The fact that it's as old as it is, I think this is 10, that's more than 10 years old. I, I uh, bought it and it's really f finely crafted. It's uh, made in France. Uh, they came out with it a couple of years ago in a made in China version, which I, I, there's nothing uh, nationalism wise at this point that would mean that that's not a good, it can't be a good coffee maker. It looked like they made a couple of uh, tweaks on it actually, but I really like this coffee maker. Now, why do I like it? I like it because, well, first of all, it is completely, I like things that somebody really thought out of the box on it. And the engineers, the designers, worked together and made this thing in many ways. Uh, you may be shocked when I say this. It is the drip maker for someone who likes uh, a pumping percolator, electric percolator. Now, you may say, well, that's not really good. It doesn't quite get to boiling, but it gets darn close. I believe I clocked uh, this in, um, the temperature, which is a bear to uh, capture because it's it's another cool thing about it is it's designed so that there's actually pressure involved and none of everything alignment is has to be perfect I thought that's what they kind of tweaked on the later ones um, and it gets to 208 degrees and that is actually exceeds what the uh, recommended uh, coffee uh, Temperatures are recommended uh, brew temps. It's okay. It doesn't get to boiling, but it gets about as hot as you can get and reasonably call it a drip maker. Uh, and a fascinating approach. Um, one of the reasons for brand confusion is the very name Mocha, which implied it was going to maybe give you the flavor of a stovetop mocha. I think in some ways that might have been the thinking, but I do not find it. Uh, it's not a batch mocha maker. That may have been what they were intending, but that's not my opinion of what it is. It is just a unique, its own, frankly, its own animal. It has uh, got its own qualities to it. And if you ever have a coffee that you can't, that you think is disappearing in your cup or does it just is too bland and you can't find a way to spice it up, I always, uh, my last resort is to throw it in this baby and see what, uh, what we can do. Uh, I use uh, 55 grams. Well, I use the recommended, uh, re recommended dose, uh, industry dose, which is uh, 55 grams for a liter uh, water. Uh, and um, anyway, let's see if we can get started. I also, by the way, I wanted to announce there's some sort of anniversary for Baratza today. It was on um, Daily Grind, I thought, uh, had it. And uh, I, I, I really like Baratza. I'm very fond of them. I don't talk about them as much uh, as I probably should. Uh, one reason I don't is because they're practically a monopoly. I mean, they don't that nobody seems to compete with them. I, I always just kiddingly 
uh, say when I'm at trade shows, I nudge, you know, the coffee maker manufacturers that are always near Baratza at the uh, shows, and I say, when are you going to come out with a grinder? You know, these guys are just have the marketplace all to themselves, and I don't get that. Um, maybe it'd make them a little more ambitious. They're a very good company. Um, I can't say I can't say anything um, but good about their uh, praise, their machines. Uh, they're, the people that work there are knowledgeable. You can get someone on the phone that you know really understands the coffee grinder and uh, very helpful. Uh, they really have done a great job. And uh, Kira and uh, Kyle, I think are the names of the owners. And they, uh, I've dealt with Kira more than Kyle. He's an engineer type. Um, it's to say he's very good at what he does, but uh, he doesn't uh, seem to want to have long conversations with me, that's for sure. But definitely have a, uh, uh, they have a lock on the marketplace, um, and, I, and they do a good job. So, uh, and grinding is critical. So I'm using a good grinder today. I just wanted to, in honor of them, um, and they, they, I keep trying to get them to come to all the coffee cons because... I, I think it's a way of letting everyone know how important grinding is. And uh, they, they go to the local one. They come to our Seattle event, but they uh, typically do not come to the others. I, for some reason, I think they were in L.A. Uh, they should be if they're not. Anyway, if you're not, please come. Uh, so we're going to use that. Uh, I, by the way, this is the Encore. And I'm going to let you in on what I think is... Let me define the difference. People always ask me the difference between the Encore and the Virtuoso, and I've got both, of course. And I can tell you that uh, what I think the, the, the really one defining difference is uh, is there's more, more grind settings on the uh, Virtuoso. You can fine-tune it. You know, that sounds like a big deal, and I know people that think that is a giant deal. It's... It is a big deal in that it's more control over the grind size. And yes, control over the grind size is important. Now, by the way, always with click clicks on them uh, so that you can remember where you had things, which I think is important too. Uh, it's not just a variable uh, control where you can't tell if it got moved a little bit. Um, and it, sh it should be how they did it, which is all clicks. But I could tell you if you can't swing it to get the uh, virtuoso, the grind quality itself is really just as good with this, in my opinion. And I believe uh, uh, both are, uh, if I recall, steel, stainless steel burrs, uh, which I think is right. Um, and I'll tell you why in a second. Unless you're doing espresso, uh, I believe that you are better off with stainless steel. Stainless steel, and the difference between that is I'm, I'm generalizing, but I think the generalization will be helpful to you. The difference is stainless steel does coarser grinds better, and uh, ceramic is, uh, if you're doing fine grinds, uh, are more likely to uh, come out better. Now, there's a crossover where in the finest of the coarse grinds and the coarsest of the fine grinds, I God, I got that right, they are... Um, they're they're both probably about equal, but if you do if if I had a, a Chemex, I would have no hesitation getting this one. Uh, if I had um, um, an espresso machine, and I really want to do fine grinds uh, pretty much exclusively, I would definitely uh, go for the uh, for a, a I would cons strongly consider at least a ceramic uh, burr. Now that said, there's still difference, quality differences between different grinders, and there are actual tests uh, that can be performed. And in, in the coming weeks, I, I keep promising this, and it's not because I'm not keeping my promise, I'm having a hard time scheduling them, uh, is uh, I want to get someone from Modern Process who make, they don't make consumer grinders, they only make uh, commercial grinders, but they are they're uh, fabulously knowledgeable and very willing to uh, impart what they know. And a grind is, I believe you would be shocked at the difference your coffee 
than your coffee taste in the morning by getting a new grinder in most cases. And uh, if you have one of those spinning blade grinders, I know I run into someone, usually a coffee roaster, that just is upset every time someone buys anything but new beans um, and uh, they want to capture all the profit. I, I think that that is uh, a mistake and uh, because their product tastes better. Uh, and I think it's important to, uh, it's like being a tailor and understanding the value of accessorizing. Uh, it is, it is, it is a uh, value added that's quite important. Grinding is very important to, uh, because grind has two places, especially in drip. Grind controls the contact time between the water and the coffee, and it controls how much surface area is exposed. Slight changes in grinding can make significant differences in, in uh, balances, which strongly affects the taste of your coffee. That said, this has fewer choices, still a lot of, uh, frankly, a lot of choices, but just not the micro tuning. But, you know, my attitude is, oh, well, I'll tell you what, I can sometimes achieve the same thing by backing off on the formula. If I can't get a little finer, I can, I can uh, increase uh, the uh, throw weight, meaning the amount of beans that I'm using to make coffee. And uh, if not, I can, uh, I can go the other way, too. I can, I can use less coffee if it's coming out a little too strong. Okay, let's get this going because this takes a few minutes. And I'm going to put a liter of water in here. Because I was so sentimental about... I, uh, how, I uh, meant to uh, check how long Barats has been around. Let's see. It would have to be... 94... 1989? That would make sense. 99, 99, 9, that'll be 30 years. Anyway, they've got uh, some sort of anniversary. I'm sure you can look at their, I'm sure they have something at their Facebook page or their site. But it's, they're a fine company. Anyway, I gave them the mention, and that's uh, probably more important than, than I remember exactly what year anniversary it is. This is another thing about this coffee maker, finding these filters. I'm Sure, somewhere you can get them online, but uh, I uh, they're number one. They were called, I don't know, there's a, probably, a, I think there's a new number one that says size one. Krupp's coffee filters, and uh, it is a nice cloth, uh, not cloth, paper filter, very high quality, as you would expect. And, oh, uh, maybe that's a good use for the for the overhead camera. We were trying to figure out what we're going to use the overhead camera for. How about that? Yeah. And then what, you just stuff it down here. You want to make sure that it's... And the filter is just a little bit bigger than the bottom of it so that there's no spill. But it's... If you don't get it exact, it will be fine. But, you know, for the purposes of making it look f fun on TV. Let me show you something, by the way, as long as we're looking at this. Look at the spray head on this. Wow, is that a nice, isn't that great? Look at the coverage. So that's one reason for, it does a great job of extraction. I mean, just the grounds are, they're, they're, they've been thoroughly soaked. You can tell there's no dry grounds ever in this coffee maker, in any of my brews. And it's got this rubber gasket, very nicely made. You can disassemble it and clean it thoroughly, I always do, between uses. I'm a, a, just a little aside, I'm a big believer in keeping your coffee makers clean. Whenever I meet somebody who tries to give me the argument that, oh, you know, I'm really hip, man. I, I always uh, let my coffee maker, you know, have a little bit of buildup on it because it's, uh, it's kind of like a, a they, uh, what is it, the uh, term in uh, stir fries uh, when, the, uh, when you've used it a lot, seasoned. It seasons the coffee maker. I'm like, no. <laughs> No, thank you, and I'm glad you uh, don't run a medical facility. Okay, um, let's uh, get this going. I poured this, in, put this in here. I adjusted it beforehand. Uh, it doesn't. Don't try to match my numbers because they're always a little. That's one thing that really hasn't happened. There's not like an exact um, calibration that I know of. Uh, but this is approximate. But 
you know, uh, this is this is what I. Oh. All grinders are loud. Sorry. That should do it. And there we go. There's another shot of the... Uh, Grounds is that how's that? This is a, uh, a you know fine grind, fine drip grind. I would uh, and this coffee, by the way, just shake. Uh, do not. Um, there's a there's always a, a kind of a a wish to uh, tamp these grounds and I think that's really uh, ill-advised um, I to be honest I, I know of one other person that owns this coffee brewer and uh, he is in Holland Robert and he's um, he has a in fact a blog post about he's it predates mine and he's uh, probably the authority on it. I, I would say I'm number two. If I even consider myself an authority, know-it-all maybe. Okay, and this is, uh, now this is where you got to be careful. I've got the water in here, okay. Oh, look at that. It's got a nice heating element in there. Can you see that overhead, Michael? Can you see the heating element? There we go. It's like a nice, you know, it's obviously just like looking into a, um, a kettle, but okay. Let's uh, let's put the actually I believe it goes on this way. I don't know if it matters. Probably doesn't. But really nice quality uh, stainless steel build. And but you want to align this just perfectly, man. Uh, and that's one thing I think they did improve. And let me just double check this with my. Uh... Okay. Uh, whoops. I had it, and then I'm, uh, there we go. That should be good. Uh, it has to all align very tightly because there's a very small hole that needs to go over a very small hole here. That And there's pressure involved. There's actually pressure. Uh, this builds up uh, like a steam pressure, and it really kind of shoots through it. Hence the, uh, I can only, I can, my worst nightmare Someone in a department store or somewhere where they would retail these would tell someone, oh, it's kind of like a batch espresso machine. It, it's not. It's, but it, what it is, it's a very, very strong cup of coffee. If my mother were alive, she would love this coffee. In fact, I did uh, bring it over once for her birthday and made her coffee with it because she, are we, are, are we, uh, I hope we're lit up there, Michael. I know we're plugged in, so unless I blew a fuse, I should, I, I think it's on. I see it, I see it, uh, do I see it, or am I imagining it? Oh, I think it's on. Okay. And then let's get this, uh, these filters out of the way. Let's get this out of the way. Oh. 55 and then the um, I've really been um, eager to find uh, something to demonstrate to show off this coffee from the San Marcos region which is not close to Lake Atitlan but nor is it uh, Antigua either it's its own uh, area but it's really a uh, uh, smallholder farms uh, I'm really uh, the more I the more I learn about coffee, botany, and the people who grow it, uh, the greater heroes they are to me. It is, uh, and really, uh, I'm, one of the reasons I'm really eager to get CoffeeCon scheduled again is because I, I really want, uh, we're getting more 
um, interest in producers coming to CoffeeCon, and I think that uh, they they really when you meet them, um, the coffee the change the t the the taste of the coffee changes, uh, the value of the coffee, the understanding that somebody just like me who actually takes a piece of earth and actually makes this wonderful beverage from it. And, uh, and of course, every step along the way is important, including yours and mine, which is to brew the stuff. And uh, make no mistake, that's a, uh, something about coffee that I think is very important to stress too, and we, in our own way, try to achieve both at Coffee Con. This takes a couple of minutes because it does need to warm up, um, but it's going. It's going. I feel the feel the heat. It's like, uh, <laughs> and I have brought along because this is so hot, and because I want to taste on camera. I said I forgot it. This drink now thing, you know, I wouldn't have thought I use I'd use this to be honest. First time I saw it, I said. Uh, you know, I mean, they, they were nice enough to, to offer me one to, to test, and uh, I, I certainly said I would test it. I mean, and I did test it, and uh, we covered it already, but I, I uh, and I will do a coffee companion review. Oh, here we go. We're getting some, some action in it. Yeah, the good news is it's lined up. Um, but this is really a wonderful product because, especially as pe more people now are, uh, having coffee on natural, meaning <laughs> I don't know whether they're dressed or not, but they're they're having it without cream and without any kind of uh, condiments at all. It's really nice to have uh, a weight, a uh, cup like this, to uh, or a siphon to bring the temperature uh, within drinking range, and that's 149 uh, maximum, according to the inventor of this product. Uh, he quoted that as the safe temperature uh, that doesn't um, risk uh, damaging your your throat. So here we go, and you can see that man, it's a really it's slow. And by the way, uh, I didn't start a timer today, but it's about six minutes to brew. It is uh, well within the uh, range of a drip uh, auto drip machine. I understand that there's some warm up time, but it does just a terrific job. I will tell you, this is one machine that works just the same way it did the day I bought it. It's very well made. The, uh, even the plastic parts are really high quality. I notice no damage to anything. Nothing is, you know, flexible. It's all it's very solid. The metal on it, um, if you can find them, uh, and I, I'm sure they're online. In fact, uh, I did check recently, and um, eBay um, has some that are new in a box. Uh, unless word gets out now, you know, and uh, it, I... If, if you're a collector of anything, uh, you know what I'm talking about with this. It's a side of you that doesn't want to talk about it online because... Which is, of course, the purpose of the show, so I... I, I am beholden to you, the audience, to tell you, and I'm uh, a blabbermouth anyway. But I definitely think uh, this is uh, something you you want to know about. And I don't sell them. I actually thought of uh, when they um, when Krups came out with them, and I I kind of figured that Krups wouldn't uh, it, it would not be a big seller just because it's anything that needs to be explained you know that doesn't you just can't look at the box and tell what the advantage are and I can see people already saying oh you know I don't want to have to line up my coffee maker you know it's not that big a deal I just had to stress that you need to uh, you need to to have some attention to it. Actually, once you once you start it up and all is good, I mean, there's nothing. I mean, I can, that's why I'm not having to pay attention to it at all right now. What is the flavor notes on this coffee is sweet tropical citrus and milk chocolate. Those are great tastes. 
and uh, we had to uh, we we had to find a grinder is really what we had to do. So there we were delayed a few minutes today. So Michael and I are a little late in having our afternoon cup of coffee. So. I think we're both eager to taste this. Now look at this, you'll get some, and I, I'm, sh I, I'm surprised that someone hasn't tried to uh, call this uh, crema, but there is a uh, certain amount of uh, foaming uh, that that comes up because of the rapidity with which the, and the pressure under which it comes out. That's quite a lot. And it does, it does affect uh, oh, there we go. It does affect the taste. Nice shot, Michael. Man, that's great. Beautiful. Yeah. You should be able to hear this pretty well. By the way, did I ever mention that we use a Joe Meek microphone pre uh, preamplifier? You, uh, some of you who are music fans certainly know who Joe Meek is. Ah. Oh. Wow, I'll tell you what, a lot of steam, but that steam is mostly the water steam, uh, not the coffee steam. So a lot of the co coffee flavor, sometimes the tragedy is this, a lot of, some of the taste goes up as steam, but not in this case. It's uh, That's from boiling, bringing the water to near boil. I'm sure it's perhaps boiling below, but it's, I assure you, it's not fully boiling when it hits the, uh, unlike pumping percolator, goes through, comes through, and then, now that it's got some coffee oils in it, gets boiled again. And that's really the, the sin of, the, of that method. And even so, a manual percolator, which we, we should do someday, is a little different story. If you've ever manually perked coffee, uh, you probably know what I mean. You can get a little gentler roll of that boil. And it's very finicky to get, but it, it is worth it. And uh, it's actually not bad. But this is a st another step um, away from that, uh, from boiling. I don't think you can truly say it's boiling. And let's see, it looks like, uh, well, that's all right. If I recall, this coffee maker does not like beep when it's done. It doesn't have that. There's no clock radio in it. Nothing like that. It's just uh, the people who designed this would have looked at their bosses with raised eyebrows, and the look would instantly cause management to say, "You know, guys, we'll we'll add the clock in the in the V2 next Christmas." Okay, um, I don't get this. Oh, look, at it's like it's got two markings for cups. I love this. The eight, the eight versus the 12. <laughs> well, you know, everybody, this is, this is a coffee maker. I'm not just picking on crups here. This is the coffee maker business. Let me, let, we got, got a good shot of that, Michael. There we go. Look at that. The, that's in a, a nutshell. A coffee maker that comes with schizophrenia. It's, it's got, it's got two, um, it's got, well, which is, how can it be both? I get what they're saying. If small cups is 12, really small cups. If it's, um, and if it's, well, frankly, a little bigger cups, it's eight. Because I never gotten eight cups out of this. It's uh, really a, um, no, maybe a six cup. Okay. But that's all right. All right. Now I think it's safe to take it off. And, uh, oh, that's right, you press this button here, it's a safety, and uh, there we go. Now, I will pour us each a cup. Oh, glad I remembered this. I'm pouring it through this because I don't want... I don't want it to... to uh, too hot. It's always been too hot. So usually I wait about 10 minutes. Well, I'm not going to waste your time by wait, waiting 10 minutes. Oh, there we go. 
All right, and then I'm getting better at this guessing what, when it's really uh, full, but this will this will this will cool it down uh, quite a bit into the into the at least into the uh, a lower altitude so that I can sip it without. I mean, if I put cream in it, it's really not going to work, is it? Yeah, I know. So. Okay, that's it. Uh, and then let's see if I can solve this any other way. I can. Yeah, I can. Here. I'll just... Um, I guess, you know what? I can actually leave it on. Oh, no, I can't leave it on there. Here. Um, All right, and I will uh, actually here. I can send that cup out there, and let me try this. Oh, let's let's see. By the way, it's probably just a little bit of water that's. Um, and let's see where we are. One thirty-nine. Yeah, that's. That's about right. So we're 10 degrees cooler than we need to be to uh, to uh, taste it without uh, hurting um, our throats. And I think it's extremely important. Mm. For two reasons. Well, that's a nice, frankly, uh, surprisingly balanced cup of coffee. I didn't expect that. I expected it to be strong. And, uh, but I didn't expect it to be as mild as it is. And that's partly uh, a testament to the, uh, to the Guatemalan coffee farmers. Uh, this part of Guatemala is really got a different taste profile. If you're used to the kind of what used to be called a smoky, uh, like Antigua, um, it's a lighter bodied coffee. It's uh, just a just a different taste profile. It, it lets you know, you know, what I've been trying to say for several years now, that the more we get to the, and we're not there yet, but we're headed there. The more we get to the direct from farm to you concept, the more we're going to find out that coffee regions have all kinds of potential flavors in their, in their coffees. And there's, there's, we're just tapping it tapping the, uh, the, the botany of, of this and, the, and the being able to identify and being able to maintain. And we do, frankly, when I started writing about coffee, which is the mid-90s, we did not have a, a, a green to uh, roaster infrastructure that could keep beans separated. I mean, beans came from Colombia and were graded by size, and Excelso was a size bean. A Supremo was a size bean. It had nothing to do with, so uh, it was, the, the surprise used to be once in a while you'd get an Excelso that tasted better than the Supremo you just had. And you'd go, what, how could this be? Well, it really, because the gratings did not, uh, it's sort of like maple syrup. I don't know if you follow that, but, you know, maple syrups, A and B, maple syrup, grade B is 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 actually many, for many uses, a better <laughs> um it uh, because it's not it's a it's a in that case there is a taste difference a pretty uh, coarse tr uh, taste difference but it's it's not by any means um, necessarily superior or inferior it's just it has to do with other uh, processing. Hmm. Hmm. Now it's cooling even more and frankly it's the cup's better for it. I actually believe too, if the if the industry is really determined to, uh, and sometimes I think they use bullying tactics. I don't approve of that. But uh, if they're really determined to get people to enjoy coffee as a as a beverage, completely by itself with nothing added to it, uh, I think a cooler cup is going to become fashionable. My prediction, because. It's a, you get more spice in it. You get a, a kind of a, 
Uh, the body comes forth more. Now that's just delicious. And that's from Big Shoulders. Um, I'm sure this, uh, well, I don't, I'm sure Big Shoulders is mail orders coffee too. Uh, they've got a number of stores now. I just opened up. Oh, I'm trying to think of how many they have now. They have quite a few in the uh, in the Midwest, in the Chicago area. But um, always a pleasure to uh, have their coffee. Uh, but this coffee maker is, and let me show you the uh, spent grounds, and then, see, look at that. Look at the, actually, this is a good use for the, uh, there we go, Michael. Here's a chance, and it's, you've got, it, no, usually we have light blocking things. Look at that, we don't. Can we get a shot of that overhead? Ah, there we are, beautiful. And look at that. The, the, the hole, by the way, there is only caused by this. That that little thing is caused uh, that. But, yeah, there we go. It's going to have, it's, look at that. They're, they're fully, everything is fully soaked and fully dried, meaning it all, the pressure also drove the coffee right out of there. So I'm I'm really impressed. That's a good sign. It, you get a nice thorough extraction. You get your money's worth on your precious grounds, and um, and you get a really flavorful, very uh, good extraction with this. Hmm. All I can say is. Um, if you ever see one, grab it. We, um, Tuesday, I had something to do, and next Tuesday, I do too. I have a, uh, an appointment that I need to keep, and it will prevent me from, uh, being able to, uh, do one on Tuesday. Maybe we can add another one next week, some other day, but, uh, I just enjoy doing these, and, uh, it's nothing but, uh, some schedule conflicts as we do them live. Um, so I am Coffee Kevin. It's great to visit with you. Always enjoy having a cup of coffee with you, and uh, we'll see you soon.